And this show is brought to you by the generosity of Crushpad. Crushpad, the urban winery where you're the winemaker. Find out more information at www.crushpadwine.com. Walla Walla Valley AVA, which is a pretty big area, actually encompasses quite a few different types of terroir. So we have elevations that range from 500 feet to 2,500 feet, rainfall that ranges from six or seven inches a year to 25 inches a year. And so depending on where you are in the valley, your terroir can be quite different. We have some very rocky soils that are quite similar to the cobblestone vineyards of uh, like Chateau Neuf de Pop in France. And we have other vineyards that are on thick silt deposits that are also quite unlike anything else around. So what you normally hear talked about is the uh, excellent drainage and the cobblestones out, out there in Melton Freewater are just about as well drained a soil as you can imagine. They basically you could dump unlimited amounts of water on those soils and they would just keep being sucked down to deeper levels and so it's easy to force the grapes to root very deeply and it's very easy to control the amount of water that the grapes get from the drip irrigation and uh, cobbles also when they're on the surface they soak up heat during the day and radiate that heat back to the plant at night so you can effectively increase your accumulation of heat units or growing degree days by uh, heat radiating off from these vines so and also the heat can is transmitted to deeper levels in the soil more quickly because the, the conductivity of the basalt cobbles is greater than uh, conductivity of the lus. Uh, so, so those are the things that are different. Uh, again, you know, just because it's different doesn't mean it's better, but it is different. And the wines that are made from those cobblestone vineyards taste quite different from the wines that come from the lus vineyards. Great wines can be made in both places. It's all about what you prefer, what kind of taste of wine you like. Wineries like Cayuse are sourcing their fruit from these cobblestone vineyards that are in a huge alluvial fan uh, where the Walla Walla River exits the Blue Mountains. So an alluvial fan is, is where a river slows down and deposits a lot of the sediment it's been transporting. And in your Milton Freewater, Oregon, the Walla Walla River has dumped a huge volume of salt cobblestones. That area has traditionally been used for orchards for many, many years, and now those orchards are being bought up quite quickly and turned into vineyards because of the claim that Christoph Barone has got for his wines at Cayuse. And chemically, the soils in those basalts are quite different from the windblown silts. So right now we're at one of the lowest parts of the valley. As far as soil type, you still have a lot of this sort of lus that's in on this, but now because of the proximity to the river, you have old riverbed, which is all, uh, all round stone. All, all cobbles, yeah. And you can also tell here this has all been hilled up. That's also to protect the roots in the wintertime because of the additional cold they get down here. Rocks, this is just drainage essentially. It just creates pockets. And so this, for a top level, will the water will drain much faster in this soil than it would, say, up at our estate vineyard. Whereas that will typically build a little bit of a cake. Here it'll go straight through because the, the water is going to want to winnow its way down in through all of this. So it quits raining in Walla Walla about now. And even though these soils are fairly rich in nutrients, you can't grow a grapevine in them unless you irrigate. That's how we control vigor and stress out the vines is through water stress. And it would not be unusual in Walla Walla if we didn't get another drop of rain until September sometime. And the whole wheat farming economy out here, we're far enough away from the mountains. The rainfall here is probably something on the order of 10 to 12 inches a year. As we move towards the mountains, it increases dramatically. The wheat, they don't, you know, the wheat quits growing sometime next month and, that, and that's fine. It's got all the water it needs and it's done. And then they harvest it in August. But the vines, they're just now starting to use a little bit of drip irrigation on the vines and they'll have to keep doing that throughout the year uh, to keep those vines alive. Rainfall where we are right here is about 12 inches a year. So essentially through the summer, this is all gonna be irrigated. Pretty much we've gotten most of the rain that we're gonna get. We might see a few sporadic storms that will come through the rest of this month in June. And then possibly we'll get a little bit of rain in September, but essentially July and August are bone dry. So the grapes will be rooting into that lust and then they'll root through the lust into the Missoula flood sediments that are below that and those soils are sandy and they have a real interesting mixture of components. Where we are here, it's 850, 900 feet elevation. This is a lot of windblown lus, um, but the main component here is what we call Ritzville or Palouse silt loam. 
Um, it's all wind deposited, and if you drive through a cloud of this in your car, even with the windows up, it'll go right through your air filter. One thing that's kind of weird about LUS is it actually, on this top layer, holds water pretty well. As Kevin Pogue was saying earlier today, the French don't like LUS because if you're in a place that has a lot of rain throughout the year, it's going to be really tough to control vigor. Here, not so much. One thing that's great for gardeners here is even if you look in a garden and you see nothing but this dry stuff on top, typically you can dig down and you can find a little bit of water. But like I say here, this isn't very deep soil. This is maybe three feet max of this. And then you're going into that that um, fractured basalt. Next up was a lunchtime food and wine pairing demonstration which used an overhead camera to help the audience view the action. Then we headed over to the Center for Enology and Viticulture for a cheese pairing seminar with, you guessed it, Walla Walla Wines. Hi, my name is Jennifer Nichols and I'm the Sales and Marketing Director for Foundry Vineyards and we are at Foundry Vineyards which is part of the Walla Walla Foundry and tonight we're doing the bronze pour to support vintage Walla Walla which supports the Art Alliance in Walla Walla. Well, tonight we will have our workers come in and actually pour bronze into our molding for a Frank Boyden cup. It's actually originally made out of ceramics and we made the mold and we're pouring bronze and silver cups to support the Art Alliance. The Walla Walla Foundry was founded almost 30 years ago and we do modern contemporary bronze casting. And we currently are also doing resin and polyurethane, silvers and different materials. <laughs> 